Hello dear student friends. If you want to know about what is Matrix of Domination Patricia Hill Collins, then please watch this full video. And please don't skip any part. There are many people in today's world who have to face some kind of oppressions just because they belong to any inferior race, gender, or sexual orientation. Such type of oppressions are basically defined as the matrix of domination by the famous author Patricia Hill Collins. A brief explanation of matrix of domination and how it has emerged in the society have been discussed in this video. Matrix of domination is a sociological theory of paradigm that deals with the issues of oppressions that are related to gender, race, class, and sexual orientation, which was introduced by Patricia Hill Collins. Collins argues that there are many addictive models of oppression that are prevalent in the digitimous thinking of racial, Eurocentric, and masculinist thoughts of many people in the society who claim of having a superior gender, race, or ethnicity. This thought is deeply rooted inside the minds of the people of the society. It is necessary to identify the matrix of domination so that the people who are being oppressed and ostracized by the dominant people should get a chance to grow with the society and provide their support for its development. Emergence of Matrix of Domination The matrix of domination did not emerge at an instance within the realm of society. In the early days, when slavery was in the septum of most of the European countries, the most common matrix of domination was racial discrimination at that time. The black people have had to face a very dominant nature and have had to go through many atrocities and oppressions by the hands of white people during the early 18th to 19th century. Then, circumstances changed and now there are many kinds of oppressions that are prevalent from the today's perspective of matrix of domination like race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and gender. This very thought of oppression does not come with the child when he grows. It certainly grows over the time when that child has to face the society and its various rules of domination. When a child grows up, he comes over to know that what color he is, what is his ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation from the other children and people around him. He would have to face some kind of discrimination, oppression, prejudice, or violence in some cases just because he belongs to an inferior race, gender, or sexual orientation. He is either being dominated or he himself grows the dominant nature against the other minor people, depending upon his color, ethnicity, race, gender, or sexual orientation. He may learn from his parents, teachers, and friends that he belongs to a superior race and other inferior race must be dominated, or vice versa. This very nature of domination grows inside the mind of any person when he tries to categorize himself with the other people living around him, that is when he tries to find his original identity among the people living around his society. This identity is finalized with the perspective of the people around him, depending upon the theory of essentialism and constructionism, or suggests that constructionism is what a person knows about the reality of this world, and what is essential for him is the product of culture and the period in which he lives. He further suggests as essentialism is what a person believes to be universal, ambiguous, and inherent are the mere backquote essences that differentiate one group from the other. Now, we differentiate our identity depending upon the following contexts. 1. Institutional. Any person distinguishes himself within the various institutions that he has been living with, like his family, educational institution, and the state. These institutions influence the beliefs of the person and categories of differences create over time. 2. Interpersonal. Interpersonal context depends how a person interact with the other person, which may or may not belong to his ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation. Every person follows some common guidelines to define norms and create categories. 3. Internal context. Sometimes, a person tries to put himself in the above two contexts and to accept the values and beliefs that he has established in the institutional and interpersonal contexts. Now, the matrix of domination occurs when some people of the community ask the person to live within the predefined regulations defined by his race, gender, or sexual orientation, etc. Any person who tends to defy these predefined regulations have to face some kind of oppressions from the identity typecasting society. 
the constitution of every country in today's world provides equal rights to every person living in a particular community. So, any oppressions on the basis of matrix of domination are not allowed and may be punishable in many countries. This is also plausible for any person living in that country. However, the matrix of domination is exaggerated in many cases where such type of exaggeration is not necessary. Such kind of politics is called identity politics that emphasizes strong collective group identities as the basis of political analysis and action. There are many groups and communities in the today's world of the matrix of domination that came into existence that made rights, privilege, and status claims on the basis of victimized identity. Some of these communities include ethnic minorities, like Asian American, African American lesbian women, gay men, and some other disabled people. The politicians use the identity politics to win the votes of these communities, and they push every limit to provide them privilege by the state. The desire to gain sympathy from a community on the basis of tarnished identity is sometimes pushed beyond the permissible limits. For example, when privileged white men announced themselves the victims based on their alleged oppressions by women, especially by feminists. Hello dear student friend.